What are we up to now? Hello everyone, Chris here. One of the biggest issues I have as a YouTube content creator is containerizing some of the things that I work on here in the shop and make it actual content. Because a lot of these things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis stem from a problem. Now recently I had a problem where I needed to 3D print a lot of different parts for a lot of different projects. And I wanted to use multiple 3D printers at the same time. Now for those projects, I needed to use a higher temp plastic, something like ASA or even some PETG that were fairly complex parts. Those would print better in an enclosure, given the fact right now, this time of year, it's around 15C here in the basement. So keeping them in the enclosure is probably a good idea. Now I do have several enclosures, but not all of them are going to fit this scenario. And that's where we're going to start today. Now this might take a few videos for me to explain everything that I did to get around this problem, but it's actually going to take a lot of different videos that I've created over the years and put them together and show you all the different things that it takes to get something like this set up. So this whole thing stems around my Prusa Mark II, now a Mark 2.5. I do have a couple of these printers, but they've always suffered from the same issue. And my original Mark II currently lives in a LAC enclosure. I did a video on that many years ago, but it's an enclosure made out of IKEA LAC tables. So let's check that out. So here is my current LAC enclosure. Now this enclosure has had this Mark II in it for many years. I've gotten a lot of use out of it. But this enclosure has one big flaw being the fact that the tables are hollow. That's just the design of the IKEA table and the Mark II is a very loud 3D printer. I would utilize this machine even more if I could, so I have to be able to make this somewhat quieter. Now I have moved this enclosure over to the other side of the basement. It was in a more central location, but even all the way over here, it's still too loud to print with it at night. And I've done a few things over the years to try to combat this, but now that I've moved it and I wanna solve this problem once and for all, it's even closer to the doorway, so there's colder air coming in. We've got a lot of things to fix here. So we have a lot of different things to tackle here to start using these printers 24-7, cranking out parts. The enclosure itself should be good enough to get up to 30C. That's more than warm enough for these printers, but I do have two of them. I'd like to be able to add one underneath. So we're going to have to increase the size some, and we're going to have to deal with that noise. Now that's the first thing I really want to tackle. I know how to do it, but it's not as straightforward as it might seem. Let me show you some of the things that I've tried over the years to keep the noise down, and I'll show you just how noisy these are. So here's the LAC enclosure with the Mark II in it without anything underneath it to separate the printer from the table. You can tell just how loud it is just from my microphone. And take a look at the decibel reading from about five feet away it'll hit almost 65 decibels. Now what I have been doing for a long time is just using this 25 millimeter styrofoam, it's house insulation, just sliding that underneath the printer. And it does help quite a bit. You can hear it just from my mic, it has quieted it down quite a bit already. And the decibel level is greatly reduced. The most you see with the foam is around 54 or 55. I did also try for a while these rubber paver stones and they work pretty good too. And the tile does do a pretty good job, pretty much the same as the foam, maybe a little quieter, and the tiles are pretty easy to deal with and affordable. At the loudest you'll see it around 53, 54. And there is one more solution that actually works the best, but it's not that easy to deal with and we have to take apart our enclosure. There's a few other downsides that we'll talk about in a minute, but that's the concrete paver. So the paver with the foam underneath is definitely the best solution as far as noise goes. It is kind of a pain to deal with that paver. 
and it is really heavy. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But you can check out the decibels on this one versus the other solutions. Most of the time it's hovering around a 47 or a 48. And if I close the door, it'll hover around a 43. Also with that paver in there, you can see how close the printer is to the top of the enclosure. It wouldn't make it all the way up in Z, so you couldn't print at the full height. So we definitely want to raise the enclosure a bit. So I'm going to create some printed parts to help us do that. So we definitely have our work cut out for us. Before we move on to lifting that enclosure a bit, I do want to talk about that concrete paver. You will have to have something underneath it to help separate that solid block from your table. I just use regular foam. I believe there's some sort of bed padding that I've had for a long time. I just cut a section out of it, slide it under there, no problem. You do need to think about these lac tables that you're using though. If you're using the same table that I am, it's very common to see these on 3D printing enclosures. They're only rated for 55 pounds. That block that I'm using weighs in around 33 pounds and then you put a printer on top of that. You can probably help the whole thing by adding some brackets like I'm gonna do in these videos, but beware of that. They're not the greatest table in the world and that block adds a lot of weight. All right, let's move on to creating some parts and get a little bit further on this project. So I just wanted to lift that top table up about 10 millimeters just to give us a little headroom up there on the top of the Z. So I just recreated the feet from the IKEA enclosure kit that Prusa has. I just raised those up 10 and I raised the lock up 10 as well where the door clips onto the magnets. So we'll have 10 millimeters of gap underneath that plexi and the tabletop. So I just created these so you can slide them on the plastic. There'll be two of these on each of the three sides and then two shorter ones for underneath the door. So we'll put all that on now. And once again, we're gonna take this whole thing apart. So to get it up the 10 millimeters that I wanna raise it, I have to raise these magnets and I'm just gonna swap out these corner feet. These are flat, I just added 10 millimeters on the bottom of these. So now that it's up 10 millimeters, we can just set the enclosure lid back on. But that leaves us with a gap underneath all of our glass. That's where these 3D printed parts come in. I can just slide those on the plexi and that'll make that up. So there, our gap is filled and you can kind of see up here up above, we have enough clearance for the print head to go all the way to the top. We could actually use some more. That 10 millimeters didn't make up for the gap of adding that paver, but I didn't want to get it too high. I wanted to reuse a lot of the things I already had. I don't print full volume 200. It's mostly smaller parts, so I'm not super worried about it. This is good enough. So we're getting this all solved one problem at a time. We have cut down the noise on the printer with that paver, and we've lifted the enclosure to compensate for that added height. But the next step, I'd like to be able to use my second Mark II in the same enclosure. So I want to put it underneath, but we're going to have the same problems. We need to get that paver in there as well as the foam and lift it so there's room. Plus there's no light down underneath the bottom there and it's not covered. So again, one problem at a time, we have to take the whole thing apart again. So here's our middle table. You can see when you have these connected to one another, there's not much space underneath them. So you have to raise them quite a bit to get your printer and your block in there. And I created these parts. These will go under all these feet. This is from the second table to the bottom table to raise this up and they'll screw in. Now, what you have to be concerned about is I put these two, these two holes offset because there is a metal screw in here that connects the leg to the top. So on that bottom table, if you try to screw down into it, if it's in the center, you might hit that stud. So that was the thinking there. So when we get these on the other table, you'll see that more in a moment, it'll go just like this. 
pretty self-explanatory, but that'll give us enough room for our paver and our printer. But it is awful dark in here, and I have a 12 volt light strip that we're gonna put on now. So our light strip isn't anything special, but I do want it in the front here. We don't want it to conflict with the frame, and we want the light on the print bed where we can see everything. I have just strip LEDs on the other one. These are just easier to use. Should work just fine. I am going to hook this up to the PSU with some connectors. So it'll run on the same PSU as the printer, but it's not that much load, so it shouldn't cause a problem. So I'll just screw this down to the table with the brackets. So our light's on, no big deal. One other thing I did want to tackle, you'll see this hole right here. To be able to feed filament down here and have it enclosed, I want to do it from the top. So it's actually going to pass through the top enclosure and come into the second one. So I created this 3D printed guide that we can just glue on to the top of the table. That way your filament won't get lost inside the cardboard here. So another problem solved. Now we can go put these feet on the other table and get it stacked back up. And like I said before, we're just gonna add these risers to the corner of the table. So it makes it a little taller and it'll hold the legs. And I'm gonna put these on with some number 12 by inch and a half screws. Sorry, no metric for these guys. And again, the holes are offset, so we avoid hitting that metal stud that's holding the legs on this table. You probably only need one screw, but I made two holes just in case the offset didn't work out correctly. One is more than enough. All the risers are on, our table can go back on here, and then we'll put these on, I believe they're number eight by three quarter inch screws, just from the sides to keep the table from going anywhere. There, now we've raised our table up and it's secure with all those riser feet. Now we can go ahead and put the printers back on, put it back together just to see how everything fits. And there we go, both printers are in. We've got our pavers for both of them. We could go ahead and start printing. There's a lot more things we need to do. That bottom enclosure needs to be just a little bit more enclosed, but we'll get to all that. And we're not quite at a there we go moment yet. We still have a lot of work to do, but we did handle the noise problem that the Mark 2.5s give us. Also, we were able to use two printers within the same footprint in that enclosure by raising it up a little bit and all of the challenges that came by adding that extra height with the paver block. Now, we have to tackle enclosing that bottom enclosure, and we have to figure out what we're gonna do with the PSUs for both of these. The power supplies usually go underneath that top table, just on the leg. Well, you can't do that if you wanna enclose that bottom surround. So they have to live somewhere else. And we have to figure out what kind of cool things we wanna do with Octoprint, and what kind of plugins and automation we wanna add but that will be for other videos. Hopefully you like this video. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.